Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Football Philosophy Channel. Uh, and it's at West Ham at Old Trafford today, uh, live at 7.15 on Sky. Really looking forward to it. You know, they've got a few injury problems. Um, uh, it looks like there's no Anthony Martial. It looks like there's no Edison Cavani. To me, that leaves us a little bit light up front. I think it's looking pretty much like Mason's going to have to play at number nine. Uh, Rumours around that Marcus is going to make the game. So it's looking like Marcus will probably play. I would imagine Marcus will play on the left and Mason at number nine and Dan James will, will probably play on the right. A lot of people hoping for Ahmad to get a start. It might be a little bit too soon to just push him straight in for the starting. Such a, it is a really big game. Make no mistake about that. Um, it's, you know, I know there's plenty of times in the recent past where United, no disrespect to him, but United wouldn't regard West Ham. Uh, as, a, as a big game but this is a particularly big game today uh, a quick look at the table um, West Ham are on 48 points we're on 54 points um, six points behind us with a game in hand if West Ham can manage to nick a victory at Old Trafford today uh, obviously there'd be three points behind us uh, with a get with a game in hand on us so there's you know I don't need to explain um, how close that is and how tight that would be for for the top four race city won last night away at Fulham 3-0 really admiring uh, I'm a big admirer of the job that Scott Parker's doing at Craven Cottage and they make it difficult for everyone and yesterday they made it really difficult for city just for 45 minutes um but they made you know the city didn't have many they had a couple of half decent chances in that first half, but they got an early goal in the second half, and uh, and that opened the floodgates, so to speak. So City City have moved on to seventy one points. Um, they are as we speak seventeen points in front of us. We're on fifty four. Yeah, when I was at school, that's uh, that's seventeen points. Uh, if you if you hadn't already given up on on United being in the title race, I think you can certainly give up now. You it's completely completely out of the question us getting back in the title race. It really is. So if we are if we are saying that, which obviously we are, let let's look at what we've got to concentrate on now. We've got to concentrate on making sure we remain in this top four. So who are the threats? The results went for us yesterday. We're on 54 points. Leicester are on 53 points. Uh, Leicester play Sheffield United today. Uh, that's on Sky Sports at 2 o'clock. Uh, under normal circumstances, you'd expect Leicester to win that game. Um, I was about to say comfortably, but that wouldn't be fair. As difficult a season as Sheffield United are having, it's not very often they get beaten comfortably by anyone. It's almost always a tight game, even though they get beaten almost every week. It's almost always a tight game, so it's not often a comfortable win for anyone. And as as we know, you often get a new manager bounce, so you you just never know if they've. You know, Obviously, uh, Chris Wilder's been sacked this week, um, or he's certainly departed company with, with Sheffield United, parted company, I should say. Um, so so the, the, they've got a new man in, and often that gives you what we call a new manager bounce, obviously. So you just never know. Sheffield might just surprise you know surprise you and go and take something from, from Leicester today. But if not, Leicester will move on to 56 points before we play West Ham. Their game... Their game's live on Sky as well at two o'clock, uh, so they could Leicester could move on to fifty six points. We'd be on fifty four points, and and Chelsea and West Ham are the other two major threats. Uh, Chelsea moved on to fifty one points yesterday. They drew drew nil nil at Ellen Road uh, against Leeds. Uh, just a quick word about that game. I watched that game, and obviously Tuchel's being it's being regarded that Tuchel's doing a great job there. Um, you know they've they've still not lost. They've kept. I can't. I've lost track of how many clean sheets they've uh, they've kept, and uh, they've had a great win away to uh, Atletico Madrid. They've got Atletico Madrid this week in the Champions League. It looks like they're going to get through get through that game, uh, in, in, obviously into the quarterfinals of the Champions League. So it started fantastic for the new manager. But when we watch United, obviously we get frustrated with a lack of goal scoring opportunities, and we you know we don't think we're playing well. But Chelsea are our major major threats for the top four spot. I watched them yesterday, and I've got to be honest, and there's no there's no bias here. There never is on my show. I, I always say that 
I watch football with a with open eyes and a and a calm mind, if you like, and 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 I just take things as I see it. So I'm not I'm not having a go at Chelsea or Thomas Tuchel, but you know they they look really uh, devoid of ideas to me. The chance you know leads leads a team who play attacking football, fast flowing, was expecting an end to end end to end game. Um, which it was a little bit end to end, but there wasn't there wasn't many chances made, not many at all by either team. So if I was a Chelsea fan, I would be I would have been a little bit concerned watching that game. They did, really didn't, uh, you know, for la- most parts of the game, they didn't look like uh, breaking leads down. But as as they do say, he's gotten well organised, plenty of clean sheets. So Chelsea did did nick a point. Uh, I'm just mentioning that Chelsea game as to say that if I was a United fan watching United or if I was a Chelsea fan watching, because obviously when you're a fan of a club, you watch the game slightly differently. If I was watching Chelsea, I'd be just as frustrated watching Chelsea as I would be uh, watching United at times recently, or certainly in that game yesterday anyway. Uh, But they did get a point. Uh, as I say, a clean sheet. So they've moved on to 51. The three points behind us. Um, we've got this game in hand on them only because we play today. We've got a game in hand on us. So Chelsea are three points behind us. We could do with widening that gap. Uh, but as I've just said, West Ham. West Ham come to Old Trafford today with a chance of moving three points behind us. So that's the top five. Obviously City of winning it, obviously. Then it looks pretty much, I mean, there are a couple of outsiders that I'm going to mention, but it looks pretty much like it's between us, Leicester, Chelsea and West Ham um, for, the, for the next three spots. And it will be wide open if West Ham win today. I'm not Manchester United's manager. I'm a fan giving my my perspective on this game. So I'm not suggesting one for one moment that we go for draw, go for a draw or play for a draw. What I am saying is the lot lots and lots of fans will be especially if it's nil nil or maybe they get a late equaliser and it finishes one one again. Lots of fans will be frustrated, lots of fans will be complaining. Let me tell you, <clears throat> if we draw today it will not be the end of the world at all. Just just looking at the amount of games we've played, by the way, 28 games. After we play this game today, after we after the, we play this game, we will be down to single figures. We are looking at the running. We, you know, if, if you're not in, in the running now, another game perhaps, and you're definitely in the running to see who, obviously, who wins things in this case, City. Uh, uh, but certainly, where you're going to finish in the table is going to be fashioned over this next few games. We've, you know, we we literally are up on the running. Surely, when you're down to single figures in games, it's the running. So you've got to start looking at the teams around you. We're thinking Leicester are going to fall away, but are they going to fall away? If they beat Sheffield United today and we don't win, they'll be above us with nine games to play. Uh, Chelsea, if again, if we lose to, if we were to draw today, we'd be four points in front of Chelsea. If we lose, we'll be three points in front of Chelsea. There'll be a big danger. So then you come to the fifth place team, West Ham. They I've got a game in hand on us and there's six points behind us. If we were to get a draw with West Ham today, they've obviously not gone away, but it keeps us well in the driving seat. If they can win their game in hand, at least they're still three points behind us. The last thing we want is them drawing level with us. Um, So if West Ham were to beat us today, you know, they'd be a, a, a... Three points behind us with a game in hand. So it's vital that we don't get beat. It is another, like Chelsea was the other week, it is another vital no-lose game. If we can win, fantastic. But it's vital that they don't lose. Um, And then the other teams that had a chance or have a chance, uh, just below West Ham, you've got Everton in sixth. They had a disastrous blow yesterday. They lost at home to Burnley. I watched that game. Um, a good, well, really well taken goal by Chris Wood, the uh, number uh, Everton uh, number nine or the Everton centre forward. Anyway, I'm not sure what number he wears on his back, but he plays at number nine. And uh, a brilliant goal by Dwight McNeil, the left winger that they that they took from United as a young lad. It was a, it really was a superb strike. A few people on Twitter saying to me, "You're always saying you don't want your players shooting from that sort of distance." couple of things about it it wasn't quite as far out as what I say I don't want them shooting from I always look at the shades of grass he's just about got into that last shade of grass so uh so he, he wasn't you know it wasn't quite as far out as I say you know never shoot from there but but mainly this is the most important ingredient I don't watch Burnley every week so I don't know if he shoots from that sort of distance regular you know the way I look at it it isn't such a great goal if you've had 25 shots from that distance and not scored 
and then suddenly you score one. But if you pick your right moment to have a shot from that distance and say you've only done it four or five times, you know, I don't know, four, five, six times this season, then, you know, make, that's a worthwhile, it's a worthwhile percentage to stick to. So I don't know whether Dwight McNeil shoots regularly from that sort of distance. But the, and one other thing I'd like to say about it as well, I love the type of goal that it is because it's, it's the part of the foot that he's hitting it with and he's curling it, he's getting the placement on it as much as he is, the power. We I often see players shooting from that sort of distance and just absolutely smashing the laces through the front of the ball and they haven't got any control over, the where, over, over where the ball's going. And I know it can swerve a lot, sometimes that can put the keeper off. But when you're hitting it with such power from such distance, I would say at least 50% of the time it's also going well off target over the bar or well wide. So... In this particular instance with Dwight McNeil, he's looking where he's going to put the ball. He's putting he's putting accuracy on the ball as well as a little bit of power. It isn't all about the power with this one. It's about the accuracy. And you know, some people might say, "Oh, you're just saying that." I'm not saying it. I'm re I'm not just saying it. I honestly believe it. I like a player who looks up and who's got that ability to see when he wants to put it. All right, you're not going to get it bang on every time. But I bet Dwight McNeil, the way he took that shot, I bet if he took that shot seven or eight times in a similar fashion, I bet he'd only miss, you know, by a foot or so if he did miss. And he'd probably put it in there once or twice. And I do think it was a brilliant goal. I really do. So that was Dwight McNeil's goal at Burnley. Calvert-Lewin scored again for Everton, got a goal back, but it wasn't enough. So, so they got beat 2-1. That left Everton. That leaves Everton on 46 points. So... Like I say, we're looking over our shoulder. We're considering who can catch us. Even a point today, like I've said, it's vital that we get a point against against uh, West Ham to keep us six points in front of, of West Ham. But just one point today would put us nine points in front of Everton. I would suggest that as we speak, sat here, that it's not impossible for Everton to catch us. They're eight points behind us uh, with with a uh, with. Sorry, we're on the same games at the moment. They will have a game in hand on us after we've played today. So if we get a point today, we're nine points in front of Everton. Everton will have a game in hand on us. As I always say, winning, as, well, as was proved yesterday, they got beat at home by Burnley. So winning your games in the Premier League isn't that, uh, that easy. Games in hand are, are often not worth a hell of a lot. So they, But they could win it. So there'd be nine points behind us with a game in hand. So now I've glanced over at the goal difference. Everton's goal difference is three and ours is 23. So I believe if we take a point today, I don't think Everton are going to overtake. That, that's too big. If it was seven, eight, nine, I'd say it's possible. The difference is 20 goals. Everton are not going to overtake our goal, our goal difference. I would bet money on that. So Everton... If we get one point today, Everton will need to make up 10 points on us. I don't see that happening. I honestly believe that it just makes that much difference today that if we get a draw, I believe Everton can't catch us. If we get beat, I believe it's still possible for them. It makes that much difference. And I think that's how they might be looking at it as well. And I think the only other team that have got any chance are Spurs. Spurs have got a game in hand on us. At the moment, so they'll still have a game in hand after today's football. Today they play Arsenal. Spurs are on 45 points. We're on 54 points. So we're already nine points in front of Spurs. The difference between Spurs, uh, the, between Spurs and Everton, uh, Spurs' goal difference is 18. They've got to make nine points up on us. Our goal difference is 23. There's every chance if they can catch us bearing in mind that while they're winning those games, their goal difference is improving. And for them to catch us, our goal difference has got to either decrease by us losing games or it's got to stay the same by us drawing some games or stay similar. Obviously, we're going to play other games along the way. All I'm saying is, is in the games that they make the points up on us, they will also be making goal difference up on us. So Spurs, 18 goals. Ours is 23 goals. That's easily catchable. So uh, Spurs, I will not rule Spurs out of it Either A, if they win today, if they win today, absolute worst ways, uh, they will still be nine points behind us with a game in hand on us, and we've still got a goal there. Um, but if Spurs win today and we get a point, I wouldn't say they're definitely out of it, Spurs, but it'll still make their job uh, much, much more difficult of actually catching us. So uh, a point today 
as regards the table will not be a disaster at all i wouldn't be throwing my toys out of the pram if this game ends up in a draw like i said i'm a fan i'm giving you my perspective on it i'm not suggesting for one moment that ollie sets up to park the bus and just try to get a point out of the game i'm just preempting what can happen at the end of the game if we draw and if we draw today it will not be a disaster in any way shape or form what will the team be um uh, I think I think it's going to more or less pick itself. I think all the back four players will come back in. I've seen one rumour that Tellez might play again. I can't see that. I really can't. I thought he was very ordinary the other night. I think I think Henderson will still play in goal. I believe De Gea's back, but he's only just back. Uh, so I think Henderson will play in goal. I think it'll be Juan Bissaka, Lindelof, Maguire and Shaw. Uh, I think it'll be Matt Tomini and Fred. I think it'll be Bruno at number 10. And up front, as I say, I think Dan James will be on the right. I think that's important. A lot of people giving him a lot of stick the other, the other night. I watched it again. <clears throat> he wasn't so bad. Obviously, we didn't take that team to the cleaners. And I know James missed a sitter, which he did miss a sitter. But he wasn't as bad as people are saying. He really wasn't. Per perfectly reasonable game. Uh, I did see somebody on Twitter say, oh, we're picking Dan James now uh, because of what he does off the ball and his work rate. That is a massive part of the game. It is a really, really important part of the game. But it's not that he's useless on the ball either. He wasn't as bad as people are saying. I'm not saying not saying he played like Johan Cruyff, but he, he had a perfectly decent game. No more than decent, but perfectly decent and doesn't deserve any more stick uh, than virtually all the other players from that game against AC Milan. And what I will say... I do think he's more comfortable on the right. He's decent on the left, uh, but <clears throat> and I think it's. I sometimes think that this tells you th things about players as well. You know, Marcus likes to play on the left and doesn't like to play on the right, and Mason likes to play on the right and doesn't seem to like to play on the left. Whereas Dan, he'll do the job quite willingly on both sides. So I think that's I think that's a good point. I really do. And Dan James is the one who gets moved around, but even he has got a favourite side, and I do think he was less less effective against AC Milan and it's the only time I can think recently you might uh, you might uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the uh, in the comments but uh, I think he's generally been playing on the right because Marcus has been playing on the left and I do think he's more comfortable on the right so you know there's another tiny little bit of an excuse from him uh, for him from the other night but today as I say if Marcus is fit I think Dan James Dan James will play on the right um, the other games today, I'm going to watch Southampton and Brighton. I like I like watching Brighton. Uh, they play at midday today. That's live on BBC One, so anybody can watch that one. That's free to air. Uh, midday on BBC One, Southampton and Brighton. At 2 o'clock, a big game for us is the Leicester versus Sheffield United on Sky. Uh, you know, Sheffield United might nick something there. Uh, but as I say, we need to be concentrating on teams that seems... I think, look, Leicester have got a great chance. I, I'm watching. I'm watching West Ham's results. I'm watching Everton's results, and I'm watching Spurs' results. You know, if the top four can finish as it is, obviously we got. We want to finish second if we can. But <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, it's the results of the teams that are chasing us from further back that are more important. But still, Leicester versus Sheffield United live on live at two o'clock Sky. Um, also at two o'clock, I might be flicking between the two. Everybody knows, I think who watches regularly, I like to watch Inter Milan's games. Uh, Inter are playing Torino today. They're still six points ahead in the in the uh, uh, Serie A. Inter, so uh, you know they want to try and keep that gap. That's live on Premier Sports two at two o'clock. Torino versus Inter, so I'll be trying to have a little look at that one at the same time. Uh, and then it's the big one today, uh, even though we're playing today, it's the big one in a lot of people's eyes. Arsenal versus Spurs at 4.30. Uh, Spurs de desperately need to win to keep the top four hopes, to keep, you know, to keep, keep the top four hopes alive. The, the, the top four hopes won't be completely out. I've been comp I've been comparing them to catching us, so they're still going to be in the hunt for the top four. Even if they, even if they get beat, they will still be in the hunt. But a win for there will be a right pep for them, a real a real step up. Uh, <clears throat> I'll be really interested to see if Jose if Jose plays uh, Gareth Bale today because obviously Kane will play, obviously uh, Son will play, and he played last week with all three of them. Bale. Kane and Son, I was I was astonished that he did, and it worked really well for him. 
I've got a feeling he will do, and if he does, it could be a really exciting game. That's at 4:30, so I'm gonna I'm gonna watch that one before uh, before I go. I probably have to miss the last 10 or 15 minutes of it to go live. We'll be going live just over an hour before United game kicks off, and United and West Ham is at 7:15 on Sky. Really looking forward to that one. I hope we win. I am level, a level-headed supporter and I realise the importance of not losing. And if so long as we don't get beat today, uh, obviously I'm hoping to see us play well, whatever happens, I want to see us play well, but it will not be a devastating result if we draw that game today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that show. We'll be back live today. It's a 7.15 kickoff, so 6.15, about 6.05, 6.10. Uh, we'll be back with the live show looking at the team, which I'm pretty confident that will be the team, as I've mentioned it today. Always say you don't know, but I think that's what it'll be. So we'll be back live at, uh, like I say, about 6.05. If you've enjoyed that show, please tell all your friends. Please subscribe. If you didn't enjoy it, don't tell anybody. Keep stum. Yeah.